match up with the values that she had in her heart. And she did not want to kill. She did not want to see others being killed for failing to comply with the commands of Islamic leaders. So she left the faith. As Lydia described, she experimented with a variety of different religions. And then she, she seemed to give up on God altogether. She became an atheist. What a journey. Of course, in the Bible from Psalm 14 verse 1, it tells us, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. You may have heard that many Muslims are becoming disheartened with Islam and are becoming atheists. This is true. I'm not sure if anyone knows the actual number, but the point is that atheism will not fill the spiritual void that exists in every human heart. Muslims, Jews, and Christians believe in God. Only the fool says in his heart, there is no God. When you look into the sky and the galaxies, it's only natural to conclude that someone created all of this. And that someone is greater than any person. That someone is God. He existed before any person. Yes, there is a God. Lydia knocked on a lot of doors looking for spiritual answers. She did not find the answer she was looking for. Does that mean there were no answers behind those doors? Or is it just that Lydia did not see the answers that were there? This leads us into a bigger question. Lydia encountered a version of Islam that she felt I mean, to be no. harsh to lads that I joined up with that I'd see this through with them to the end. Not We've like got the factory boys and office clerks that when we was need being soldiers. Around Come on in! Many of you watching today But Lydia did not reject the true Islam. She only rejected an imperfect display of Islam. Some of you may feel that the Islam Lydia rejected was not a good representation. This is a fair concern. Because there are so many different applications of Islam and Christianity, we try to take the following approach. We evaluate Islam as the Islam of the Quran and the Islam of Muhammad. We do not quote from any other authors. We go straight to the source. We also strive to quote the entire ayah, not just a part of it. The same thing holds for Christianity. We evaluate Christianity as the Christianity of Jesus Christ, the Christianity of the Bible. We, again, go straight to the source. We are not looking to what commentators have said about the Quran or the Bible. We choose to go straight to the source. We do this to be fair, not because we feel that we are the only people qualified to interpret these books, but because this decision is a decision that matters. Your interpretation will be the interpretation that matters in your own life. For Lydia, her life's course was set by what she observed and what she experienced. Yours will be too. We only ask that you try to have an objective outlook on the matters of faith. Try to be fair. Understand that not everyone who calls himself a Muslim or a Christian may represent the faith fully and perfectly. Perhaps no one can accomplish this. Having just outlined our premise for our discussion, you may be aware that there is a crisis in the Islamic world today. It is a battle for the soul of Islam. Which is Islam? Is it the Islam of the Mujahideen, Al-Qaeda, and the terrorist? Is it the Islam that Lydia had forced down her throat as a young person? Many of you are familiar with the ayah from the Quran which states, there shall be no conversion in matters of faith. This is found in Surah Baqarah, ayah 256, which reads in its entirety as follows, there shall be no conversion in matters of faith. Distinct has now become the right way from the way of error. Hence, he who rejects the power of evil and believes in God has indeed taken hold of a support most unfailing, which shall never give way, for God is all-hearing, all-knowing. This verse appears to promote tolerance, but many other parts of the Quran seem to promote another Islam. These surahs contain many harsh verses 
as they apply to dealing with infidels and the application of Islam to society. This is what Lydia rejected. So the truth is, many people are studying the Quran and the Hadiths, looking for the true Islam and coming away disheartened by their findings. So what about Christianity? There are over two billion people in the world who claim to be Christians. We have asked, what is the true Islam? Shouldn't we also ask, what is true Christianity? Let's go straight to the source. In the Bible, John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it states, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Jesus also said about Himself in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, The Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. This is the true Christian Gospel. God sent Jesus Christ into the world to die for your sins. Jesus came to reconcile you to the one true God. Lydia experienced this reconciliation. You can experience it too. Jesus is personally seeking you out. He is not dead. Muslims and Christians agree on this point. Jesus is not dead. Muslims believe that He ascended up. Christians know that He rose from the dead. Are you wandering around spiritually alone and without direction? The Bible tells us of God's faithfulness to those who trust in Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 it reads, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. This is the true God, the faithful God. This is the God that eventually satisfied the thirst of Lydia's heart. Lydia came to understand no one deserves to have their sins forgiven. Whether you are religious or not, you don't deserve to have your sins forgiven. But the true and loving God has made a way for you. Jesus Christ has taken the punishment for you and me and has offered us forgiveness an eternal life that we don't deserve. That fills my heart with hope. That filled Lydia's heart with joy. Are you on a journey to hope yet? Are you searching like Lydia? Are you still unsatisfied? Perhaps today is your day of salvation. Today can be the day where you receive Jesus Christ into your heart and make Him Lord of your life. It doesn't matter what background you're, you have or where you were born. Jesus Christ loves you. He died and rose again so that you could have eternal life with Him. Won't you accept His free gift of salvation? All you need to do is pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. I believe that you're the Son of God and that you came down to save me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life and guide me in your will and your ways. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friends, if you said this prayer with me, I'd like to welcome you to the family of God. Feel free to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Please contact us through our website, muslimjourneytohope.com. When you log on, you'll find some wonderful materials, both in English and in Arabic, which are designed especially to encourage you in this new relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, please email us with questions or concerns you may have about what you've heard in the program. We want to help you as much as we can. And we look forward to responding to your emails. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to join us again next time when we'll share another true story about the transforming power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until then, goodbye and God bless you. When you don't have the Christ, 
you are walking in darkness without knowing it because when you are in darkness you get used to it after a while when you open your eyes you can see things actually but you are in darkness and um, you never know you are in darkness and when you receive Jesus all of a the sudden there is a light it's a freedom it's so free of everything you, you, if you're a real Christian there is nothing that you can be worried about that's the biggest change in my life I don't have any worries I cannot be worried about anything I don't have any anxious I, it's so many so many black spots are like they, they become bright for you that so many questions they have answers what's the purpose of being on this earth um, why why my life is like that why my parents are this why I am this color why I was born in this point of country everything has an answer then you will find all the answer that God has given us which is total truth when you don't have Jesus you can't forgive people and this bitterness grow in you and it's so hard no I don't want to forgive that person he made my life miserable but Jesus Lord says if you don't, how, how could Father forgive you? Oh no, I want Father forgive me. Out of obedience, when I did it, God gave me the strength and then filled it, the empty place with love. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. I find this amazing thing in, in this faith that if you could love everybody, I mean, people do bad to you, they are always hurting. If you look at them like they are bleeding because they have wounds and you just treat them with love and forgive them and just be kind to them that change them and also it's a beauty it makes the whole society different and it totally changed the life totally changed your lifestyle change your view of universe uh, everything makes sense and for me that that is really great let me pray for you Father, we thank you so much for this program. We thank you, Lord God, for this moment and the people that are watching this episode of Muslim Journey to Hope. Right now, God, I pray that you would move in their hearts and in their lives, that supernaturally that you would come and just infuse them with your spirit. God, that they would feel you for the very first time. The God, that they would experience the love that we've talked about. They would know that you are real in a supernatural way. God, there's a lot of fear involved, Lord, especially in the hearts of Muslims as they debate if they should come to Christ or not. And God, I pray that you would just give them strength, that you would show them in dreams and visions, Lord, that you are real. God, we, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.